morning, Abundant Faith. Good to be here. I hope everybody's enjoying their Labor Day. Labor Day weekend. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to be here with you today. I thank Pastor, uh, my pastors, Jeta apostolic authority over this house. Amen. Let's give them a hand. For trusting uh, me with the people of God this morning. I just thank you, body of believers. Most of you I've had some interactions with. I want to acknowledge my wife, Lisa, 27 years. And uh, she's my, my best friend, my daughter, Taylor, and my son, Michael. One of the things I like about being at this church is that Pastor allows me to be who I am. He doesn't, he, he's not, he, he doesn't try to clone us, his ministry. He allows us to be, our personalities to be like they are. Uh, as he said, we served in a few ministries. We get to go to other cities. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't say hello to uh, Jacksonville, the men in Jacksonville, the men at Lincoln Correctional this morning, and the ladies at Decatur Correctional and Logan Correctional. Amen. Amen. We have a uh, prison ministry team, uh, Elder D, Elder Tyus, uh, Eddie, Liz, um, a few others, Tracy, Cynthia. There's a bunch of folks here that go in and have a heart for people who have struggled, people who have fallen down. I think many of the people in this room have had times where you've fallen down, and God has restored you. Amen. Some of you were just fortunate that you didn't go to jail. Amen. So we try to go in and uh, uh, visit with them. Uh, I've had those things even, don't let the tie fool you. Uh, but I've had some, some, some history and some things happen to me. I've spent some time uh, in the county uh, uh, corrections. And uh, there was a person who came in while I was there. And they ministered the word of God while I was there. So I think that's what we got a passion uh, for inmates, for prisoners. And I think the, the word tells us that we're supposed to visit the, the prisoner. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, this is our sixth session. Uh, we've had some great ministers, great speakers come up and, and minister. My assignment today is to talk about change. How can I ever change? We all want to change. We all want to grow. And, and, and sometimes we don't know how to do it or where to begin. Sometimes we want to change our physical bodies. You know, we'll take a pill or something and <laughs> to lose weight. And uh, you take it for a while and you just drop all the weight. Then you stop taking it and all the weight comes back. You know what I'm saying? And you're bigger than you were, you were at first. Amen. But we all need to, to make some changes, some outward changes. It's the, but, but, but it's the inward stuff that trips us up. Uh, so we have to change. Uh, Pastor Rick Warren, he said, uh, a life that is not willing to change is a great tragedy, a wasted life. Amen. And, and one of the things, God wants to change you from the inside out. He wants to take the inside. He, he, we have our part, and God has his part. On the one hand, God has to do it. And the Holy Spirit is working on the inside of us to transform us into uh, the image of Jesus Christ. On the other hand, we have to surrender and cooperate with God in this process. And we've got to do it voluntarily, and we've got to do it obediently, and we've got to do it consistently. Amen? And that brings me uh, to my text. God has called us to be about his business, all of us. All of us are ministers of God in various stages of development. We're going to come from Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. And I'll read. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And verse 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, 
that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Let's go to the throne in prayer. Father God, we just honor you and glorify you today. We thank you for all your, your blessings and all the gifts and all that you're doing, Father, in the kingdom. Lord, anoint us in this time and this season, Father, that we might be about your business. Bless us, Father. Heal, deliver, and set free. And we just thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name. So how can I ever change? How can I ever change? I've had moments where I needed to change. I was, uh, lived in Chicago for many years. Uh, <laughs> I went to school and I, I got the education part, but I also had another side. I was one person in the daytime and another person in nighttime. I was living a double life. I was uh, going to the University of Illinois in the daytime. I was in pharmaceutical sales at nighttime. <laughs> On a personal level, and, and, you know, that's what change is about. I didn't say that, but God had to deal me, with me through my circumstances. You know, the, and my points today, I've got three points I'm going to talk about. One is, is just doing the things that everybody in this church knows to do. That's to read your Bible, to pray, study, memorize the Word of God. The other part is that's to yield to the Holy Ghost. Yield to the Spirit of God so he can do his work in you. And then when you don't do those two things, God has to deal with you through your circumstances. And things begin to occur and things he'll, he'll allow to happen to get your attention. How many people that, 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 that are at attention right now? You know, he'll cause some things, that'll allow things to happen that will cause you to have to say, my, my, my God, what is this? What in the world is going on? Hallelujah. So many times we want to change our spouse. You know, we want to change our close friends. We want to change our children. And they want to change us. But God says, I want to first change you. I want to see change. And, you know, we have to recognize that God is still in control. No matter how chaotic the situation gets, the devil has not carjacked God. God is still has the steering wheel, and he's driving the car of your life. And the devil is in the trunk. Amen? <laughs> so when you look at Romans... When you look at Romans, Paul is laying out some foundational truths. Chapters 1 through 8, Paul is dealing with the sinful nature of man. He says, he says that for the wages of sin is death, and the gift of God is eternal life through victory in Christ. And he deals with those foundational issues in chapters 1 through 8. In chapters 9 through 11, he begins to spell out what's right relationship with God. And he goes in and he, 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 he that's the scripture that we use when we're ministering on the street. If I confess with, confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, he shall, he shall be saved. So he goes on in Romans 12, our, our text, and he's giving us instructions on how to do this. How do you live a holy lifestyle? How can I live a holy lifestyle? Some of us have been just acting crazy for so long. And God says, I'm going to change you. Amen. So in verse 1, he says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, who is your, what is your reasonable service. He wants you to be a living sacrifice. He's saying in the light of everything that God has done, it's only reasonable for you to serve me. It's only reasonable for you to worship me. It's only reasonable that you will love your brother even when they're unlovable. It's only reasonable because he gave his life for us, right? And, and, and I feel so much that, that we have not truly worshipped unless we've given ourselves 100% to God. Worship is total commitment of the total person for the total life. Anything left, less is not a living sacrifice. Speaking of a living sacrifice, uh, my daughter Taylor, she just started her second year at SIUE. Amen. Amen. And... 
And we went to lunch, and you know, we like to go out to lunch sometime, I'm, you know, spend some time together. I want to find out what's really going on at the college. I want to know what's, what's happening. I don't know whether she'll tell me or not, but I'm hoping that she'll share it with me. And I asked her how she was feeling. Oh, she said, oh, things are fine. And, uh, you know, because we're spending a lot of money, and uh, uh, she, she's always calling us for money, and we've got an apartment we rented for her down there. She's not on campus anymore. And... Uh, I asked her how she was feeling, and she said that she was feeling some type of way. <laughs> now, I know there's some people in here who know what that means. And uh, I, f- I had to, to go into the Urban Dictionary to find out what it really meant. <laughs> and it really means that I don't know how I feel. <laughs> so I just give God glory, you know. Uh, no father wants to hear their the, the daughter tell you I'm feeling some type of way. But uh, I have to t- we text her regularly. I tell her, you know, you got the mind of Christ and, you know, that, that you're the head and not the tail. And her mother texts her, try to keep her encouraged because, you know, there's a lot of debauchery that goes on on campuses. And, um, and it a lot depends on who you're hanging out with, too. You know, you got to watch those people you hang out with because they have an effect on you. And even if you don't intend to get involved in some, 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 some activities, if you hang out with that person, you become like that person or they become like you. Amen. Amen? So it's important. If you hang out with crazy people, guess what? You're going to find yourself in trouble all the time. But if you hang out with godly people, you'll begin to talk about Scripture and talk about the things of God. Let's give God some praise right there. We're talking about the things of God this morning. So living sacrifice, let me, let me just, just add this in. This just, just, just dropped. If you're considering dating someone Come on now. Mm-hmm. that does not love and honor God, if you're considering marrying someone mm-hmm. who does not love or honor God, mm-hmm. no matter what you do, they're not going to love and honor you. Mm-hmm. No matter what you do. They may be able to fake it for a while, but you got some trouble on your hands right there. Amen? So in, in being a living sacrifice, we want to let our bodies. I mean, we have done so many things with our bodies. You can smile. And, and so our, our bodies should be a living act of worship. You should honor God with your body. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, uh, 19 and 20, he says, you're not your own. You don't even own your body. You were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. God wants all of you. He wants your body, your mind, and your spirit. And when you get with God, when you go in and you get saved and you say, okay, God said, okay, I got a blank piece of paper I want you to sign. It's a contract. He said, just sign. It's blank, but he said, just sign the bottom of it. And you said, no, fill it in, and then I'll sign it. He says, no, sign it, and then I'll fill it in. Amen. He says that, he says, because I filled it in before the foundation of the world. Amen. And I knew you before you were formed in the womb. And I set you apart before you were born. And I appointed you to be a prophet unto the nation. Well, I appointed you for a purpose in my kingdom. So, As we continue to study Romans 12, we find that Paul is not only encouraging us to live for God, he's showing us how to do it. And he says in verse 2, he says, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, uh, perfect will of God. What does it mean to be conformed? The the word conformed means to be molded in in the pattern. In other words, a pattern or standard. To be conformed means to go along with the world. Be drawn into the lifestyle you used to live in before you got saved. Then why is it so hard to live the the Christian life? I'm going to give you three quick points. One, we have a fleshly nature that still craves sin. We still think about it. Romans 7 and 20 says, Now, if I do that, would I would not. It is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. Paul is saying, although I want to do what's right, I have a very difficult time. And many people are struggling, even right now, even in this room with, 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 with things. And then the second part is we have an enemy, the devil. 
And he wants to, he told Peter, he says, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. Now, Peter was a believer, and Satan still was trying to sift him. Then Paul writes in Ephesians 6 and 12, he says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We live in a world ruled by sin. And Paul says again, be not conformed to this world. And the world basically is the, this planet we live on and the people that live on the planet. So don't let the world set your standard. Don't let the world, don't act and embrace that way of thinking. Don't live your life by, by, by the world's standard. Don't behave like those who don't know Christ. You're supposed to be in the world and not of the world. And we have two implants because we're supposed to go out and preach the gospel to every creature. We're supposed to be, Paul said, be all things to all people, but not conforming to the world. So there's a balance. You don't hide yourself in a house and not come out to avoid sin. You have to have God's word in your heart. And, and you have to hold his principles and obey his word. On the eve of his crucifixion, Jesus said some things. He said, he prays to his father in John 17, 14 through 19. He says, we are sent. I'm, I'm paraphrasing now. He says, know that God has sent us into the world as a light to represent him. He doesn't call us to hide. He calls us to shine as lights on a hill pointing toward the Savior. But some things have happened in the earth recently. And I think churches, some churches, not this one, but some churches have started to compromise. And they've started to become, they, 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 they want to become tolerant. And see, God is not tolerant. He's patient. He'll, he'll help us in our struggle, but he is not tolerant. God is not playing church games with us. And then when we look at, that's why you got to find a strong church. This is a strong church. And I know that I've been here. I wouldn't stay if it wasn't. And then when you look at America, America is shaking its fists at God. And many of us have begun shaking our fists. And, and, and we've said that, that, that well, look at, look at things that are going on. The majority rules. They, they pass legislation sliding down the slope. We started out as a Christian nation. Now we're moving toward paganism. Large companies are in control. We have the morality is sliding. We got the lowest marriage rate in the history. We got men on, kissing men mm -hmm. and women kissing women. That's right. We got same-sex marriage, legal. Come on, brother. We got marijuana clouds hanging over the cities. Because oh. the, the, the folks that are lobby, they, they see a profit motive there. We got businesses that are corrupt. Charging high interest rates for low quality items. Making a massive profit and calling it the blessing of God. We have to resist the enemy. We need to discern the spirit that we're operating under. As a nation, we used to send missionaries throughout the world. And, and you look at the TV now and you look at what's happening with the music, and they took the Bibles out to schools, and you can't say nothing. Nobody wants to say nothing. And everybody else didn't come out the closet. The church needs to come out the closet. <laughs> now other nations are sending missionaries to America. And we got men that father children they won't take care of. And then they end up in the prison system. And our team see them every other week. They're in there. And I did a poll at, 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 at the prison, and I asked them, how many of you all, and we're talking to two, 200 guys, sometimes 100 to 200 guys. He said, how many of you all had your fathers in your life? 95% of them raised, didn't have your fathers in your life. 95% of them raised their hands. So we have a crisis of mass incarceration going on. And the only way we're going to defeat that thing is by the power of God. So we are mocking God. So we have to be careful about the, the seeds we're sowing because we can fall into the hands of an angry God. 
we need to change. We need to change. I think about uh, Ferguson and, 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 and what it's not. And, and we, we've seen the news. Everybody's seen what happened on the news. And you got to watch. You got to be careful watching the news. Because sometimes they paint a different picture. Yeah. And, and, and so, so we don't really know what exactly. We know what happened, but we don't know exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. But, 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 but it's not about black and white. Yeah. It's about fear. Mm-hmm. It's about the enemy trying to cause division. Mm-hmm. And people don't know that what we saw on TV, there was church mothers praying in the spirit, praying at, those, at the place where that, at those protests in Ferguson, yeah. believing God. But they didn't show that part. So this is a diversion tactic of the enemy to get us focused on everything but God. But God is calling his church to walk in the power of the spirit. God is calling us to keep our eyes on him and off of the world. There is a remnant that still believes him. And I believe some of those remnant is in this room right now. It's time for us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Because we're pretty useless if we, don't, if we start conforming to the world around us. You can take the money. You can take the car. You can take the house. You can buy the clothes. You can do the hairdo. But you can't take none of that with you. We need to be storing up treasure in heaven. Doing what God calls us to, to do. Amen. Doing what... Being what he called us to be. The transformation is not on the outside, it's on the inside. So we need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And the way you know you're transformed is real easy. Galatians 5.22. Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Against such, there is no law. Amen. Amen. You know, one morning a few weeks ago, I was clowning around with Michael, my son, and the bass. When we get up in the morning, we make a lot of noise. We throw soap at each other. And usually I hear Lisa hollering, y'all stop, I'm trying to sleep. You know, I hear all that. Every day we hear that. And (laughs) But we're making a big mess. And then Mike, and we were talking about the Word of God, because I always talk to the kids about different things that I'm thinking about and I'm preparing. And Mike yells out. He says, because I start yelling at him, he said, Dad, you need to transform and roll out. <laughs> I said, you know, I said, he got that from the movie, you know, the Transformers, you know, where the cars turn into robots, Bumblebee, you know what I'm saying. And I laughed at first, but then I realized that this is a good characterization of what God wants from us. God wants us to be transformed into the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he wants you to roll out into purpose, roll out into destiny, roll out into service in the kingdom. Amen. Many times the Holy Ghost will give you a message through your kids. He'll give you a, the Holy Ghost will give you a message to the kids and say something and make your head turn completely around. <laughs> they'll cause conviction because they'll call you out. Yes, they will. If, you, if you're faking and not what you say you are, the kids will tell on it. Yes, they will. My daughter tell me, yes, minister, what did you say? <laughs> but God wants us to transform our lives for the kingdom. He wants to win the loss. But before we transform, see, we got people trying to roll out before they transform. Come on now. We got a lot of people who roll out, and, and they've not been transformed. Now they're stumbling and messing up people all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or we have people who won't transform. They're just sitting there. They've been taking in this good word for years and years, and they ain't did nothing with it. But God has a way of dealing with us. And he's giving us some solutions to the problem. And I'm going to give you three solutions. First solution is he gives you the Bible. Now, I know that all of you all know that. Some of you got Bibles sitting on your lap. I don't know how much you're reading them, you know. But, you know, sometimes the Bible makes you go to sleep like some of y'all going to sleep right now. (laughs) Hallelujah. 
And that's just what, what God's going to do when you're crying out for prayer, crying out for a blessing. He's going to sleep on you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but God uses the Bible to change us. And true change comes when we seek the truth. You know, the Bible in John 17, 1 says, Sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is truth. And he says in 2 Timothy 3 and 16 and 17, he says, The whole Bible was given to us by inspiration of God. And it's useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what's wrong in our lives. It straightens us out and it, help us, it helps us to do what's right. It's God's way of making us well prepared at every point. Fully equipped to do good to everyone. The Bible says that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you're to study your word. You should meditate and chew on the word. You're to memorize scriptures. You take a scripture in an area that you're struggling with, and everybody's got an area. And you begin to chew on that thing. You begin to meditate and ruminate on that, on that scripture. And you memorize that scripture. Say it during the day. And you begin to see transformation. You'll begin to see progress in that area. And so we met, and you pick out scriptures. I was, I was in the streets doing crazy stuff, and once I started trying to get saved, my scripture was Psalms 1 and uh, 1. Because I was hanging out with the ungodly. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight shall be in the law of the Lord. And on that law, he meditates day and night. And then he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. He'll bear fruit in his season, and his leaf will not wither. And whatsoever he do shall prosper. Amen. Let's give God some praise. And I just follow that word. And, 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 and because, see, a lot of people don't know. Don't let the tie fool you. I've been homeless before. I've been homeless before. I've been without a car. I sold my car for an eight ball one time, but don't tell nobody. <laughs> but I bet you I ain't selling for an eight ball right now. <laughs> Richard Foster, the author of the book Celebration of Discipline, he says, to pray, because you got to pray and worship. To pray is to change. Prayer is the central avenue God uses to transform us. And if we're unwilling to change, we will abandon prayer as a noticeable characteristic in our lives. And the closer we come to the heartbeat of God, the more we desire to be conformed to Christ. We need to fall in love with God. We need to fall back in love with Jesus. It makes me want to do more of what he's asking me to do. Hallelujah. I no longer come to him in prayer with a long list. Of requests. I, I, I have prayer wants, but, but, but I want to first hear what he wants from me. Amen. I want to hear how he wants to position me. And, by, and, and I'm listening for his voice. You know, he's speaking today. And he's speaking to everybody that's in here. And he's speaking to you about you. And a lot of people want to close their ears and close their eyes and act like they couldn't hear. And God has been calling you and calling you. And you've been declining the phone call. But he's going to get with you. And then you're going to cry out for him. So at some point, we'll begin to think God starts. We obey, and we begin to see what he sees. We begin to look at things like he looks at it. We begin to hear his voice and hear what he says, and we begin to decree and declare. And then once you can hear him, you can prophesy. And then once you've submitted yourself to the Spirit of God, you can cast out a devil, and he'll have to leave. Amen? One of the things we can do is be committed to our church. <laughs> this is a church family. We live together on Sundays. We, we, we interdependent. See, there's a saying that goes around that everything in church, there's a, there's, everything's a secret, but everybody knows. <laughs> we, we have to love each other. And sometimes we get, just like in your, your, your natural family, we get on each other's nerves sometimes. So we correct each other. And we sometimes envious, just like your immediate family. But God expects us to love each other and get along and make up 
You got to kiss and make up. Come on. So here we get relationship and accountability and discipleship. That's what we get in this church. Accountability, service, and worship. And we grow in maturity in Christ's likeness. See, a lot of people think the church just goes along. There's discipline in this church. You know, pastor is real smooth with it, though. He'll call you in and talk to you about something else completely different. And then he'll, cow, this is what I wanted to tell you. And he does it in love, and I appreciate that. That's why I'm submitted to his authority. But I do get in trouble sometimes. <laughs> now, oh, God, my point two, because I got to run. Point two, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Go to Acts 2. And this is probably the only scripture I'm going to put on. Acts 2 and 15. You need the Holy Spirit in your life. You need to be able to hear God's voice. Because then he'll direct your path. He says, my sheep hear my voice. And another, they will not follow. And he also says that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This scripture, and this is the last one I'm going to be reading. This scripture will be, this is verse 15. See, this is what happened when the Holy Ghost hits. See, when you get saved, you get a certain measure of the Holy Spirit. He lives on the inside of every believer. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. You got the Holy Ghost. He lives there. You got a full glass of the Holy Ghost when you got saved. But there's, a little, there's another little experience you, you might not have. And it's called the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm going to read this. For though, and see, this, they thought the people was drunk. And, and this is what, what I believe it was uh, Peter. Peter said this. Peter said, but these are not drunken as you suppose. Sin is only 9 o'clock, the third hour of the day. But this is that. This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And he said, it shall come to pass in the last day, says God. And I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And my servants and my handmaids, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they shall prophesy. God is pouring it out today. People, God is pouring it out for his people today, mm-hmm. and we have to begin to receive it. We have to begin to seek after that baptism. God wants you to move into power. He wants you to move into purpose, and you need to get that extra touch. Some people have been filled with the Spirit in the past, and they, and, and they, let, they, and they let it dry down because they don't activate it. They're not operating in it. Sometimes you need another touch. Sometimes you need a refilling. Yes. Amen? Yes. And then verse 14 to 16. Uh, John 14, 16, he says, I will ask the Father, and he'll give you another advocate, and he'll be with you forever, the spirit of truth. And we have to begin to seek after the spirit of truth. We have to begin to seek after God like never before and believe that he's speaking to his people in this hour. And Acts 1 and 8, he says, but you shall receive power. And after that, you shall be witnesses upon me in Jerusalem. And you'll be witnesses all over. He's going to deal with you about your mouth. He's going to take your mouth and he's going to take a fire from the, from the throne room of heaven, from the altar. And he's going to put it on your mouth and you're going to prophesy. And you're going to begin to stop cussing and start prophesying. Now, I'm jumping a little bit, but I got to get my last point. And my last point, if you don't get this, that's why some people have a problem with people who are praying tongues. But tongues, you're going to need tongues. You need tongues. 1 Corinthians 14 says, I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayer, but my understanding is unfruitful. Sometimes you're going to need to be praying directly to God, and that's what happens when you pray in tongues. You're praying directly to God. And see, it's okay. He says, pray with an understanding. Pray in the spirit. Sometimes I pray with understanding. So when you pray with understanding, you're praying in English. If you know what's wrong, you just pray about it. But if you don't know what's wrong, Sometimes your knowledge is insufficient. Try raising kids or grandkids. You'll come to a point where you don't know what to pray about. Try working a job. And you start getting people coming after you and blaming you for stuff. You don't know what to pray about. Try being married. 
Just look straight ahead and blink at me. <laughs> no matter how wonderful it is, there will be some days where you'll sit back and look up to heaven and say, what in the world did I get myself into? My final point. You need the Holy Spirit. That's my bottom line. You need to seek him like never before. You need to operate in the gifting of the Holy Spirit. You, you need to find out what gift God gave you and begin to find out and move in that gift. You need to learn how to cast out a devil. Hallelujah. And the final point is God uses our circumstances. Now, if you didn't get the Bible reading part and the study and the memorization, and the Holy Spirit moved on you and you refused to move, then God is serious about you. He's not letting you get away. He will deal with your circumstances. He will allow circumstances to come in. And, 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 and you will, then you will, you will cry out to him then. You'll cry out. He, made, he, he affected my circumstance. He had me locked up. And then I got in there, and, I, and a guy jumped off the second tier and slashed the guy across the neck. And then I said, oh, God, get me out of here. And I ain't been back since either. <laughs> so God will allow crisis to come in. You don't want to get, you don't have to give it the Holy Ghost. Just keep waiting. Keep waiting. God wants your attention. He wants you working in his kingdom. He wants you. He's not changing his mind. Don't wait for a crisis to come. Do it voluntarily. And, and finally, I'm going to close it right here. God has called us to, see, see, we're looking at the reality TV. Some of us watching reality shows on TV. You know the ones I'm talking about, the ones you ain't supposed to be watching. And, 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 but that's not reality. They get paid for that. The reality is that Jesus Christ died for our sins. The reality is that he sent the Holy Ghost to comfort you. The reality is that he's given us he, he's given us power over evil spirits. See, the reality is that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's the reality. So God has called us to be, he's called us to be exceptional, not conformed. Mediocrity is not acceptable. Ordinary is the enemy. And see, anytime you get ordinary and exceptional together, you got a fight going on. He wants to transform you out of darkness. He wants to transform you from complaining to praising him. He wants to, he wants to give you a new mind, for you have the mind of Christ. Amen. 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 And Jesus is the ultimate transformer. He transformed on the mountain, and his face became like the sun and raiment. He transformed water into wine, and he's still transforming people today. Amen. He transformed from the word, and the word became flesh and came down through 42 generations. And born of a virgin Mary. Then he transformed a raging sea and told it, peace be still. And he took Lazarus, who was dead, and transformed death unto life. And he took a blind man and gave him his sight. And he took an old rugged cross out on the hill of Calvary, where he hung and he bled. And he placed a barred tomb, and he laid there three days and three nights. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. Amen. And we believe in God. For that. We're believing that God is still speaking. We believe that God is still in the miracle working business. We believe in that. We believe it with all our hearts. Stand to your feet, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. The Lord is speaking to us in this hour. He's saying that my sheep hear my voice. And know that this is a time of shifting season of shifting and a season of change and a season of acceleration and I'm shifting your function in this hour and I'm accelerating my kingdom operation and I'm shaking up those who are stuck in a past move and those who refuse to shift and I'm opening your spiritual ears and your spiritual eyes so you can see me like I am and I'm sharpening your spiritual discernment in this hour and I'll guide you with my eye and I'm calling you this day to give up your manipulation and you're working things out in your own strength and rely on me. Completely surrender your life to me, your dreams, your goals, because I've assigned you to a specific purpose. I'll begin to transform you and renew your mind. 
and I'll create in you a clean heart and a right spirit. I'll purify your mouth with coal from my altar, and I'll move you into that place I've always called you to be. Through me, you'll be healed. You'll be delivered. You'll be healed of your past pain and delivered from your present fear. I release revelation and wisdom today. And I go out and free others who are lost. But surely you can depend on me because I love you with an unquenchable love. And I charge you that you'll do it for my glory. For my glory will be your portion, says God. Amen, amen. Let's give God some praise. Now there's some of you who have not been operating in your gifting. Ministers, you can come forward. There's some of you who have not been, who just need a touch from God. You've not maybe not been praying like you should. Some of you have some things that have been on you and you can't seem to get free. Persistent issues. God says, I can free you today. God says, if you're not filled with my spirit, I can fill you today. God said, if you're not saved and sanctified, he says, I can get you saved today. So I'm calling those who need a touch from God. Maybe nothing is really seriously wrong, but you're not operating at the high level that God calls you to. God is an unlimited God, and we should not be where we were last year, the same level. We shouldn't be where we were last month if you're in his word. He's taking us from glory to glory and strength to strength. We have to begin to honor him and love him like never before. So come forward if you need prayer. And I'm addressing my the television audience. I'm going to pray a corporate prayer. You can pray with me if you like. Those that are here can come forward for prayer if you need a touch from God. Young people, don't wait till, you, till it's too late. pray with me. Father God, I repent of all my sins. And Lord, I know I've been a sinner. Lord, I just, I thank you that you shed your blood for my sins. I confess with my mouth that you are Jesus the Lord. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. Save me today, Lord. And Lord, one more thing. Lord, I'm asking you to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me, Lord, so that I can operate at a higher level. Fill me, Lord, so I can heal my marriage, so that I can, so that I understand my children. Lord, open up doors so, I, so that I might find work and housing. And Lord, put me to work in your kingdom because I want to be about your business. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for filling me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Let's give God some praise. Those of you who need prayer, you can come forward. Have a great Labor Day weekend. Amen.